Hello, this is Hellbent, and welcome back to part two of tutorial number three, which is if statements. Uh, we're just going to continue on from where we had left off. So the first thing I'm going to do is comment out our if statement. And then I'm going to go ahead and collapse that. Okay, next thing that we're going to look at is else. So what else is, is sometimes if an if statement doesn't ring true, we're going to want it to do something else. And that's what we're going to do with this one. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create our input box. And this time I'm not going to. I'm going to assign my temp variable first. Um, this time I'm not going to do, I don't want it to have a title. So if I want to have that title bar blank, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the tab character. And now when it prints it out, it won't have any title at all. Okay. And this one will do... And then we'll do a new line. Uh, let's go two lines. And then we'll say one equals yes. Then we'll do another new line. And two equals no. So we'll ask the user if they want to exit the program. And we will. Let's put a sleep or a delay in here. And we'll use a half a second as again. Um, and then we'll just say if temp equals one, if temp equals one, so if they want to exit the program, we'll just do message box and we'll say. The script will now exit and then immediately after that we will have a, just our exit app command so it'll exit this program now if they didn't enter one we can just say we can check to see if two is true but in this case, because one is the only thing that really matters, like we only want to know if they want to exit. So if they press one, yes, they want to exit. If they enter any other value, they don't want to exit. So we're just going to say else, and then we're going to go down a line, tab over once, and put in French braces. We're going to say message box. say the script will continue and that's it what we can also do though is we can also check to see if it's true so if temp equals 2 we can just do the exact same thing we did for our else okay but you know what <clears throat> i think we were too easy on our on our user I think we gave them pretty simple instructions. We said enter one if you want to exit, enter two if you don't want to exit. So let's change our else. Let's not be so nice with our user because they, they obviously don't know how to read instructions. So how about how about we say
there let's let's really really rib it to them all right so we'll go ahead and save this and we'll run it so the first thing we'll do is we'll type in our one and we get a message box that says the script will now exit let's run it again we'll enter two the script will continue and then we'll run it one last time where they enter in some random gibberish and before we do that as you notice when we did that tab if you look there's no title now so it's just blank up there okay so they're they're a moron they entered something other than what we asked them to enter what does it do it says don't you know how to follow simple instructions <laughs> all right okay and then we can have it do that um, actually you know what that's probably a, a loop we'll get to loops l later on that I'll save that for loop section all right so that's that's our else statement so if if we go through our if statements and none of them ring true we can set it up so that way if it's any other value it'll do this else now a lot of the times with your programs you're not going to actually have to use an else because it just you're you'll just have your program just continue on its merry way it didn't it it wasn't true so it just keeps going until it encounters something else but when we do want it to do something that's separate from our if statements we'll have this else all right simple enough all right i'll comment that out and collapse it okay next we have Siamese Kirby no no we have greater than equals and less than and equals okay so we'll start off again with our simple input box uh, our variable we'll call temp again and by using a temp variable, what we can do is we can use the same variable over and over again. And once we're done using it, like after we get our value from the user for this, we can assign it to a permanent var variable like we did with that not temp variable. <clears throat> so that way we only have to create one variable for our input box. Um, I don't want a title again, so let's just go with... Uh, We'll do our tab, and what are we going to get them to do this time? How about a number between 1 and 100? Okay, and as usual, we'll add in a little sleep command. Sleep for half of a second. And then we'll do our if. So if, first of all, I guess we'll start with greater than. So if temp is greater than 50, do this. And what's it going to do? Just for this, it's just going to do a message box. Message box. Okay. So we'll go ahead and run that. Let me see, do I need anything else? I don't think so. All right, so the first thing we'll do is we'll enter a number that's obviously lower than 50. So, and it does nothing. This time we'll add a value of 50 and it does nothing. And now we'll add a value that's greater than 50 and we get your number is greater than 50. Now, what if we want to inc include 50 in it? Now we have a couple of options. We could either do it like if temp is greater than 49 and it would be the same thing so if we entered 50 then it would do this 
but another way we can do it is if it's greater than or equal to oops, greater than equal to and we'll put 50 so now if, if the number is 50 or greater than 50 it'll do our message box Alright, we'll save our changes and give it a run. So because we have these two if statements here, if I put the number, for example, 55, both we're going to get two message boxes. The number is greater than 50, and the number is greater than or equal to 50. If we run it again, and this time we just put the number 50 in it, we'll only get the one message box. The number is greater than or equal to 50. Um, what's going on here? Let me try. Okay, there we go. Okay, I guess that space does the difference. Okay, next we will look at less than if temp is less than. Um, let's go less than 49. Let's do less than 49. If temp is less than 49, we will get it to do another message box. Okay, and we will run it. Alright, we'll pick the number 48. The number is less than 49, but once again, if we put the number, if we put the actual number 49 in there, we get nothing. So once again, we can just solve that by either changing it to less than 50, or we can have less than equals. If temp is less than equals to 49 and as I said before if we only know that we're gonna only have one line underneath we don't actually have to add the French braces but I like to add them but for this I'll just show it without it the number is less then or okay so as you can see we only have one line underneath it so we don't need our parenthesis I mean our French braces but we'll check to make sure all right run we'll put in a value of 49 and we get a message box that says the number is less than or equal to 49 okay so I don't think we need to dwell on this one too long. If you uh, have any problems with it, just do a couple examples. And we will continue. We'll comment it out. And let me see my time. Okay, I think that's it for part two. I'll see you guys on part three where we will continue on.